Good morning. Good morning. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Edgarlo died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal life. On the day of his baptism, Edgardo was clothed in Christ. Now may he share the fullness of his glory and his joy and his peace forever. to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fear you will hear my voice I claim you as my choice be still and know I am here I am hope for all who are homeless and I am eyes who all long to see in the shadows of the night I will be your light come and rest in me do not be afraid I am with you I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am strength for all the despairing. Healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you. Good morning. Please be seated. It is a little more common for the eulogy to be given at the end of the Mass, but I prefer at the beginning so that all of the sentiments that are written in that eulogy will become part of our prayer and our recollection and, and celebration of honor. Okay. So the eulogy. not really ready for this, but um, thank you everyone for uh, taking the time out of your lives to help us say farewell to my uncle Eddie. He was special. Pardon me. He was a happy loving husband, a funny uncle, a devoted son, a brother you can count on in a pinch. He made you feel at home anywhere you were, 
if he was there. I would miss him so much if it wasn't for the fact that he's always there in my heart and in my mind with his jokes, his stories of past and present glories. When he first came to California, before he got his license, he used to ride the bus to go to work. Disco was still the top of the charts and Uncle Eddie was up with the style. He dressed in the style with the silk shirt, the members only jacket, all buttoned down wearing his gold chains. He looked cool if it wasn't for the umbrella and the rain while standing next to a bus stop waving at us as we passed by him on our way to school. My grandfather would take us in his station wagon and we'd all hang out the window yelling at him, you look cool. That was my Uncle Eddie, always smiling at us, waving at us. He was a happy and loved man. He makes me smile just thinking about him. The conversations that everyone will have about him today will prove that. He will talk, we will talk about him as if he were there in a the room with us, and he is. He left a piece of himself with each and every one of us that's here today. We may not be able to have lunch with him anymore or watch Top Gun with him, but he'll be watching with us. We may not dance with him anymore, but he'll be there dancing when his favorite song comes on. Loving him was easy. He was a wonderful person that you can count on. You can't help but be drawn to him. He was a great neighbor. Everyone loved him. His neighbors loved him. Which I would like right now to give special thanks to his neighbor, Efren, for taking the time out of his life, day or night, to come to my uncle's aid when he needed it at his worst. He is, you're very much appreciated, especially by me. My Uncle Eddie traveled the world with his wife, Aunt Luce. He spared nothing to make her happy. She stood by him through good times all the way up to his last days. She gave him his love and comfort, the same love and comfort he gave her. They traveled the world and saw wonders that few of us will only see in pictures. They danced the way dancing should be done, with grace and feelings. I actually saw them dance at a wedding, and it was something to behold. They cleared the dance floor every time they got on it. Very few have experienced that. Someone here, Aunt Lucy's niece, Rowena, actually experienced dancing with him one of the very few that actually got to behold him. She flew here from the Philippines to be with her, Aunt Luz and to say farewell personally to Uncle Eddie. That's the kind of dedication he brought out on us. My parents would sometimes leave him, leave us with Uncle Eddie when we were young. He was trusted to take care of us. He took care of us, and we could always talk him into having pizza for breakfast, lunch, even dinner, all in the same day. He was one of us, just another one of the kids getting into trouble. There's actually a lot I want to talk about my Uncle Eddie, 
ask any of his niece and nephews, and they will tell you stories of happy times and funny moments. So it's actually with a heavy heart that I say goodbye to my Uncle Eddie. Someday you and I will share another movie. And another trip. To Norm's. For that late steak and eggs breakfast. Maybe we'll even share a crispy pata. Or that crispy pork belly his favorite. May all the goodness and love that you've shown me be forever give me strength. You're a beacon to our family that we gathered around and drew strength from. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you really bad. I love you, Uncle Eddie. And I hope we'll meet again. Thank you. Please stand. And let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant Edgardo to be inscribed in the book of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now to hear the word of God. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. But if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them, them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stumble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because the grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, 
so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears. From, from death, death into, into life. <clears throat> Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. should wander the valley of death. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O God, Beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me. All the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my A reading from the first Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this, on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, 
will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus told his disciples, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I'm troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. A friend of mine this weekend, uh, his only daughter had her firstborn child at uh, 42. She uh, has this little girl now. And um, They've been going back and forth over what name to give. And uh, so when my friend came back, I said, so what did they decide? Because I offered the name Perry Ann, <laughs> and uh, they didn't buy it. So um, he told me, no name. She doesn't have a name yet. And it reminded me of, I think it's in Nigeria or Ghana, I'm not sure which, but I read a story once that said, that in that country, or at least that region of the country, when a child is born, until they're baptized and given their name at baptism, they uh, will answer this way. If you say, well, what's your baby's name? They'll say, no name, no name. And then on the day of baptism is the day that they receive that name, and, and you could say in a, in a beautiful way that God calls them by name. So, I was thinking of that when I read the eulogy before. I had a copy of it and heard it again today as you kept calling your Uncle Eddie. And I thought, well, I have to call him Edgar, though, because that's what God called him in baptism, although he's more affectionately known maybe by many or most or all as Eddie. But I'd like to suggest that there might be a reason for that, you know, Uh, When people know somebody by a different name or a shortened name or a version of the name, it's often, or most, most often, it's a very affectionate way of coming to know that person and relating to that person. And it's almost like that's our name for you, and it becomes very precious. So uh, the beautiful readings, the beautiful scriptures that were chosen today, 
But I chose this gospel in particular for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, Jesus was foretelling his own death, and in foretelling his own death, he used this example, great teacher that he was, he could talk about a candle flame or a plant or, or um, the floor or the roof or ceiling, and in this case he chose a grain of wheat, a single grain of wheat, and he must have held it up right before them and said, look, unless this grain of wheat goes into the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat, and it's absolutely true. My family comes from uh, wheat farmers in Kansas, and, and um, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with that. But if I took a grain of wheat and put it right here on the edge of this podium here and put a scotch tape over it, we could come back in five years and you'd find the grain of wheat. It, it would have the possibility of yield, but it doesn't yield until it goes in the ground and dies. And when it dies, it actually disintegrates as a seed, and by the time a stalk grows up filled with all these other seeds, if you dug down to find the seed, you wouldn't find it. You'd find roots and the beginning of the plant. And that is what Jesus was saying to his disciples. I have to die. I have to die in order to produce even more fruit. But not only was he saying that about himself, he says it about us. And so Jesus uses, again, typically as a great teacher, very strong language, very profound language. He says, whoever loves his life loses it. In other words, if everything we do in life is for me, I want it for me, I'm going to take it for me, I'm going to hold on it to me, I'm not going to share, uh, it's a kind of a, a, a strange death, a death uh, because you don't produce much fruit if you're hugging on to everything just for oneself. But he says in this strong language, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. And I think that some people might take that literally to think that you're supposed to hate yourself and hate your life. But that strong language is to say, because if you don't put yourself first in everything, but you hate your life, you let, go of, you let go of self and me for others, whoa, will you produce much fruit? We heard it in the eulogy today. That's fruitfulness, that kind of love for an uncle. And, and I could just see the station wagon going down the street and them hanging out the windows, hi, Uncle Eddie, hi, Uncle Eddie, um, needing to make that connection, little kids, with their beloved uncle. Well, There's a saying, um, when somebody is very comfortable in themselves, they say he or she, they're, they're comfortable in their own skin. Uh, or another image is somebody who has some nice pairs of shoes, but then they go put on these old clunky things that, that you know, they go, why would you wear those? Because of the most comfortable shoes I have. I just love putting my feet in these shoes, they're so comfortable. Well, when somebody's comfortable with themselves in that way, loving themselves really, but Jesus would say hating themselves because they're so willing to give themselves to others and bring fruitfulness and blessing to everyone else, that's a person comfortable in their own skin. And they become for us like that pair of old shoes that are just so wonderful to put your feet into because there's so much... Um, comfortableness with that person. What I heard in the eulogy and what I heard about his life and what I heard about his life with his wife and his extended family and his friends is that this is a man who became very comfortable with himself and he loved life. He loved to live life. He loved to give life. And in that giving of life, a lot of people were blessed. And those many seeds of love just kept growing and growing and multiplying and multiplying and bringing even more blessing. So it's interesting that as Jesus wraps up his little speech today, he says, now he focuses on what's coming. I guess in a way he knew that cross was coming. And he said, I'm troubled now. 
Yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. Don't let it happen. And yet with a total resignation and a total trust in God, he said, but it was for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then wondrously in this passage, a voice comes from heaven and says, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. And how would he glorify it? In that very cross. Because in that very cross, some of the final words of Jesus, as Luke tells us, is, Father, forgive them all, all my assassins, all the people killing me, all the people who have rejected me, all those who have made fun of me, mocked me, all those who at this very hour are joyful because I'm dying in front of their eyes. They love it. Father, forgive them all. They know not what they do. And he gave glory to God, trusting and believing in the Father who had the power to forgive even such hatred and ugliness and sin. So I hear those words today, not just being said for Jesus in the scripture, but I think being said for Edgardo. I think Edgardo um, lived very much, uh, very comfortable in his skin and very comfortable in his person, his faith and his relationships and in life. And because of that comfortableness, he was able to give life to others. And I think I hear God say today, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. And our response after each of the petitions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Edgardo received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Edgardo was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before, have gone before us and await the kingdom Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who scatter so unjustly. These sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Edgardo seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother, Edgardo. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the presentation and preparation of the gifts.
that seemed a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind. <coughs> Tis grace that hath taught my heart to feel, and grace my fears relieved. How precious dear. That grace appear the hour I first believed when we've been home ten thousand. Bright shining as the sun, with no less days to sing together God's praise <coughs> than when. We first begun. Pray, my sisters and brothers, our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. Be near, O Lord, to your servant Edgardo, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him or any human fault have affected him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <coughs> holy, 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 Lord God. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, all the clergy, all your people. Remember your servant Edgardo, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, with Bernard and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. stand. And let us pray together in the words that Jesus has taught us all as we say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Thank you. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you 
take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Dona nobis This is Jesus the Christ who has come to take away our sin and bring us life eternal. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only Thank say the word and my soul shall be healed. <coughs> of life you who come to me shall not hunger and who believe in me shall not thirst no one can come to me unless the father beckons and I will flesh for the life of the world and if you eat of this bread you shall live forever you shall live forever and I will
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Garlo may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. At the end of every Catholic funeral, we have these beautiful uh, final prayers, um, the final commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Edgaro. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. And in this song of farewell, there's a response. I'd like to invite you to share this response. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself and may angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. I just want to encourage you, uh, uh, thinking aloud that uh, I think the first year uh, when someone dies is the most difficult year. Uh, it's the rawest year. And one of the reasons is uh, all of you will celebrate your birthday without him physically present there, anniversary of marriage, Father's Day, all those at Christmas, Easter, all the days that are important. And... Um, and that plus, every song that was special to him that you know, you'll hear that, and that will open the floodgates, and, and his favorite food, and all the things, you know, places that you both went on uh, during your lifetime, uh, uh, some of the journeys and trips and the traveling. So the first year, all of those, I think, are just, they're raw because they're the first time. Um, and you all know those dates that are important probably, so I hope you'll call the family, uh, the immediate family and, and even extended family, and, and, and just give a call and ask how they're doing without Edgardo there to celebrate with them because they, they will be hurting. And uh, you may uh, cause tears, but you're really not causing them. You're allowing them to be shared with you, and, and that's a very beautiful thing to love in that way. So uh, I hope you'll be super generous in reaching out during this first year, especially. If we could extend our hands in final prayer. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Edgardo in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he rises with him. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Edgardo in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother at Garbo forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Eddie, and all of your family and friends gathered around you this day. In the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. To God.
to cool in the warmth of the sun. When I give my heart, it will be completely can 